Former minister wrote to me, Amechi, once said Nigerians don't react to anything. Is that true? Well, I would not love to take that as an answer because um, we are yet to get to the promised land. This is the reason why we bring forth anybody who has been found wanting as regards the mismanagement of Nigerian funds, as well as other political um, updates that would help move the country forward. My name is Angelo. This is Nation Voice Tower. The United States authorities have probed some people from the former President Mahmoud Buhari's government and they have brought them out in details. And this particular time, they might not escape it. I brought you an update earlier of monies ranging to over, you know, $80 million, if not $800 million, um, that, uh, were, that was looted by the former... Uh, government of President Mahmoud Buhari. Now, this 800 million was allegedly from a forgotten up to for, or a forgotten up to 100 um, million barrels of crude oil found in some farms in China, and this crude oil allegedly belonged to the Nigerian government. Just found by a Mexican company, and you know, all said and done, the money went down the drain. We never heard anything about it again. So this time around, the same people involved, with just a slight difference, have been called out by the United States authorities because of some whooping amounts of money. So the United States authorities have probed Sabiu Yusuf to that effect. Sabiu Yusuf is the one called Sabiu Tunde Yusuf, the personal assistant to former President Mamadou Buhari. Maman Daura, who is allegedly... President Mahmoud Buhari's cousin, elder cousin, and um, the Funtua family, the two brothers, and um, other people for laundering millions in Dubai and London, respectively. This expose is real, and they will be shocked that we have a grip on this expose. They will be shocked that we have details of this particular um, uh, money laundering expose. They will be so shocked that we have all the details from when they began and when they finished. And that is why I told you, we will not joke with such updates until something is done about it. We will continue to bring these updates to the public space. So let's go, to, let's write together, let's go together to see how much they have stolen over time. Now, according to our sources uh, that were based in the Department of Justice, the DOJ, in the United States, and also uh, some sources back at home in Nigeria, authorities in the United States, may have commenced large-scale investigation into the massive looting of Nigeria's treasury by members of the former President Mahmoud Buhari's cabal. According to sources at the United States Department and the Department of Justice, DOJ are said to have tracked money laundering activities of Buhari's personal assistant and private secretary, one Mr. Sabiu Tunde Yusuf. Senior Special Assistant, Domestic, Sarki Abba, and Maman Daura, who is allegedly former President Mahmoud Buhari's elder brother, and one Ismaila Isa and Abubakar Isa Funtua from 2016 to 2019 in the United Arab Emirates and the United Kingdom. While the U.S. is relying on her mutual legal assistant 30 MLAT, with the UK to compile the money laundering activities of the interested persons. They are also said to have invoked the Foreign Account Tax Compliance FATCA Act, an agreement entered with the United Arab Emirates UAE to commence the investigations. Members of the cabal are supposedly Buhari's nephew, Mamman Daura, Isa Funtua, President Buhari's personal assistant and private secretary, Sabi Yusuf, and the president's and the former president's former chief of staff, Abba Kiari, who died some months or some two years ago. The investigation of Buhari's cabal is part of investigations being conducted by the U.S. government over the massive looting and money laundering going on in the administration that was just concluded. According to sources that revealed to us, Sabiu Tunde Yusuf allegedly 
has been moving millions to London and Dubai, where he is alleged to have acquired choice properties. However, State Department sources who do not want to be named told us that activities of Sabiu Tunde Yusuf, Mamman Daura, Muhammad Mamman Daura, and the Funtuas have caught the attention of the U.S. investigators. According to sources, financial transactions done by the members of the cabal between 2016 and 2019 using banks in Nigeria, London, and Dubai have been flagged. Properties purchased from funds suspected to have been laundered by the mentioned people have been traced in Dubai and London respectively, according to a source familiar with the investigation. Authorities said the most troubling is cash movements linked to Sabi Yusuf through some proxies to Dubai and London using some first generation banks in Nigeria. According to the same source, top officials of the new generation banks have helped Sabiu Tunde Yusuf and others named in laundering over $900 million by disguising its sources in the last five to eight years of the former President Mahmoud Buhari's administration. The source said over 900 million naira has been laundered between 2016 and 2019 by officials in the former President Mahmoud Buhari's government. Most have been used to purchase choice properties in Dubai and London. Recall that the former Attorney General of the Federation under former President Mahmoud Buhari's administration, Abubakar Malami, and the former chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu, have been under the radar of the U.S. government over acts of corruption and rights abuses in relation to the management of the Abacha loot and funds that were estimated to be around $800 million. Malami and Magu and also other members of the former President Mahmoud Buhari's cabinet are being processed for sanctions by the U.S. over lots of improper conduct via funds that allegedly belong to the Nigerian coffers, especially the most recent, implicating them from lots of barrels and millions of barrels of oil found in a farm in China. While it was gathered that Malami, the former AGN, pocketed over $250 million from the Abacha's loot. Our sources learned that the Attorney General, formerly, and former KB State Governor Atiku Babudu, allegedly shared some of the parts of the recovered loot. These two further claimed that it was a commission that was paid to negotiators while these amounts of money went to their private accounts. A case has also been filed in New Jersey challenging the former Attorney General and his huge amount found in his account and the one he demanded for a commission from the Abacha repatriated loots. Our sources gathered that the U.S. government has invoked the Magnitsky Act on the two government officials and several other members of the former President Muhammadu Buhari's administration. In 2016, Congress enacted the Global Magnitsky Human Rights Accountability Act, which allows the U.S. government to sanction foreign government officials Past, both past and present, implicated in human rights abuses anywhere in the world. A U.S. senator called Charles Grassley recently asked the U.S. government to withhold the repatriation of $320 million Abacha loot to Nigeria, citing former President Mahmoud Buhari's refusal to cooperate with the U.S. Department of Justice to finalize a second for future and the second for future action to against a separate $100 million that was supposedly a loot out of the Abacha's money, as well as intending to return the money to an official who was involved in corruption with Abacha. He insisted that it was critical for Congress to understand what steps the U.S. government was taking before it helped to transfer 
millions of dollars to Nigeria to ensure that the money is not fueling more corruption and government abuses. Senator Grassley, who also decried the lack of safeguards and the money that was supposed to be repatriated to Nigeria, allegedly said the money will be used for what has been agreed upon. Also tackled the AGN, which was Abubakar Malami at that time, and the EFCC chairman acting at that time was Ibrahim Magu, saying, under their guidance, the former President Mahmoud Buhari's administration had clamped down on anyone voicing opposition to the government. The lawmaker who chairs the Senate Committee on Finance said this in a letter he wrote to one Mrs. Deborah Connor, who is the Chief Money Laundering and Asset Recovery Section of the Department of Justice, DOJ, the U.S., on April 1, 2020. The senator's action was in light of a report by Bloomberg on the U.S. government's resistance to a plan by the Nigerian government to transfer over $110 million to one Mr. Bagudu from money stolen from Nigerian Treasury by the late Sani Abacha. Sources at the U.S. Congress told us that a bipartisan committee is under serious considerations to consider reports of fraud and gross abuse of power and human rights brought against top power and rights holding officials of the former President Mamadou Buhari's government. All right, I will not say much on that because uh, President Mamadou Buhari has always uh, um, portrayed to Nigerians that he was the most transparent leader uh, that could ever govern Nigeria. But when he came on board, uh, the reverse was the case, all right? People used his head and used him and um, finally kept him where he was supposed to be. He has ended up enriching a faction or a particular region or a particular uh, group of people uh, by his emergence as president within the last eight years. That alone is very, very annoying. But we will not bring it up because we are here for change, of course. So I would um, move quickly to the second update this will shock you you know why because hell was let loose yes talking about hell hell was let loose when students of the Imo state university booed and jeered at governor hope uzodema of Imo state the students were heard shouting no light no light while the governor was on a grand campaign visit to the university ahead of the December by elections in the states. This will shock you. Students were calling out the governor in his presence, protesting against him and booing him while he came for a campaign. Please stay tuned for the video. <laughs> Um, Imo State University students there fearlessly telling him what he, he is supposed not to hear or what he feels he can't hear. Hope that they marshaled um, wear his shoes and um, go back to where he came from or better still take off his shoes and trade well for the path he's trading on is actually a holy path because you can't trample on the rights and franchise of the good people of Imo State who voted you into power according to you and then all of a sudden um, you were you are now wanting in leadership you are wanting in governance you are wanting in uh, your responsibilities hence the reason why these students are calling him out more students should do same then maybe he would um, go back to his senses and stop perpetrating the evil and heinous acts that he has been up to in the state. Finally, um, the Petroleum Tanker Drivers Association of Nigeria have called on its members to shelve their plans to cause hardship for Nigerians. This faction of the Petroleum Tanker Drivers Association of Nigeria pledged their undying desire to continue to battle the Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas, NUPENG, 
in court. Recall that a um, few days ago, say plus or minus five days ago, um, the Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Gas, Nupeng, and its president were having a meeting at the Nupeng headquarters in Abuja, uh, where a new president of the PT, the Petroleum Tanker Drivers Association, emerged. And um, an altercation ensued, and there was an assault by the new PTD president on the Nupeng chairman, which resulted in the arrest of um, the new or uh, the former PTD president and his secretary and other members of the Petroleum Tanker Drivers Association. To that effect, the tanker drivers took to the streets and wanted to protest. In fact, they wanted to cause hardship to Nigerians and businessmen by not uh, being mobile anymore or by going on strike. Uh, but uh, their hierarchy and their executives have come out today since the case is in court and they have, have called on uh, tranquility and calm amongst members. Please uh, watch the brief press conference. I come to, uh, I want to address all my people all over, the, all over the country, all my members, my tanker drivers, my comrades, that we are not for fight. Uh, we are not fighting anybody. All we want is justice. And besides, we want all our members, all our members, to go about their normal duties. Whoever molests them, they should please and please hold peace. They should please and please hold peace. Nobody should quarrel or fight anybody outside here. We are for peace, we are not for destruction. Because whatever happens in the wrong way, we don't know how it will end in the other way. But for that reason, we are now advising or appealing to all our members not to make any trouble outside there. But they should go and do their normal duties. Any molestation, they, should, they, know, where, they know who and who to call. Because this country will need peace now, not pieces. Comrades, and I want all of us that are here to relay this message back to our, our comrades over there, our drivers over there, from the Potako Zone, Wari Zone, Lagos Zone, and Kaduna Zone as well. Thank you and God bless you. He is for Leto. We are Africa. He is for Leto. He is for Leto. Struggle. Continue. Struggle. Continue. Victory. Uh, please, let me quickly add that um, we had earlier planned to a full press conference. But legally, because of the court cases, they said it would be contemptuous for us to do any press conference. Everything is under control. And since everything is under control, the, the struggle have now shipped to court. There is no need coming to talk to people here on the press. I was now calling our members to go back to their normal duties. But the struggle to liberate PTD has just begun. So whether we press conference or not press conference, the struggle continues. Therefore, we must be peaceful in our conduct. But if we are challenged, we know where to go to protect ourselves. Sure. Because you cannot be a woman somewhere to come and slap you and say, okay, you are not Jesus now before you leave your other yeah, to say slap again. Yeah. Abby? So yeah. please, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. All right, I have said all that should be said there before the video, so I won't say much. Kudos to the hierarchy and executives of um, the PTD, the petroleum tanker drivers. They have just done the needful. It is better to wait for um, calm and wait for the judgment of the court and then taking laws into your hands. I think that particular part is quite understandable. Thank you so much for staying thus far. I hope you enjoyed these updates. Please like our videos. Don't forget to share them. Don't forget to uh, to drop a comment for us in the comment section. I beg your pardon. And if you're watching me for the first, for the first time, please tap the subscribe button so that you will get to see me anytime I drop a new content. If you want to see me first time or you want to be among the first people to see me when I drop a new video and a new update, then you will tap the notification bell so that you'll be notified when it drops. See you next time. Bye.